In this video, we're going to see how to put together a layout using Constraint View in Android Studio. So this is an example of roughly what we want to put together. I'll zoom up just a little bit, but we see there's a box for latitude and longitude across the top. And then there's a spinner for specimens, then an autocomplete, and then a couple of text, a couple of edit text components, a button bar, and then an image view. So this is what I've put together on the answer key, and it's what, similar to what we're going to do in our own project. So we'll start with a few things. First of all, I'm going to create a new branch. We'll say create layout, or we'll just call it layout. That's fine. And also I'm going to come over to the project. I'm going to go to values and then I'm going to colors, going to go to colors. And this is where our theme colors appear. Now in a previous video, we took a look at a few theme colors that we got from a color wheel. So I'm going to grab a couple of these colors and I'm going to plug them in just here. So we'll say color primary. We're going to make that like so. And that's kind of a beige color. You see it gives us a little hint here. Uh, color primary dark. I'll tell you what, let's let's hang tight on primary dark for just a moment. moment. For uh, accent, we'll plug in this kind of greenish color. Uh, for color primary dark, I'm going to go with one of the tan colors that we got on the color wheel. We will, we might change these around a little bit. Go ahead and save. We'll, we might change these around a little bit. I might swap the accent in the dark. But either way, just to note that if you have a hexadecimal color theme that you wish to use, one of the first things you want to do is plug it into this colors XML. Okay, got that. Now let's go back to our main fragment. This is one place where the view gets a bit cluttered and can be a little bit tricky, so I'm going to hit a few of these minimizes just to give us a bit better focus, because the canvas that we want to use to do our work is kind of small. Zoom up a little bit, and we see there's currently this main fragment. We don't need that. Just select and hit delete, and now let's start putting together our look and feel. So the first thing, text view is essentially a label. It's something that cannot be changed. So I'm going to start with, or change by the user at least, can't be edited. We can change it programmatically. I'll start by dropping this text view onto my uh, canvas. And you see with the leftmost bubble, I drag it and I, I click and I drag to the left. The topmost bubble, I drag and click, move to the top. That way, this first component is on the top left. And this is the item that we're going to just make a label. Uh, so ID, we'll call this LBL latitude, because it's just going to contain the text for latitude. And then for text, I click, I choose add new resource, resource name, latitude. We'll set, why don't we say, yeah, latitude. Resource value, latitude, just like so. And okay, what's going on here is it's adding this value to a file called strings.xml, and it's associating the uppercase L latitude with a value called latitude, lowercase l. The nice thing about this is it helps us with internationalization. We'll be able to swap that out and use uh, different words for different languages. So it's really tiny, really kind of hard to see, but if I zoom up, you can see in the upper left we have latitude. So let's repeat this. Let's make another item and we're going to call this one the longitude label. Let's hook it to the left, and let's also drag it so it's at the bottom of latitude. So with the constraint layout, what we're doing is we're constraining one item to another. So you see they're essentially stacked, latitude and then this thing called text view. For the text, we'll do the same thing that we just did. We find the text attribute, and we change it from text to longitude. We'll give it a name longitude, and longitude just like so. So that's a label that the user will see that will describe what is latitude and what is longitude. Now I can go to this constraint widget and give just a little bit of padding between this and its siblings. Uh, I can do the same for latitude up above. That way it doesn't look so squished together. Uh, nonetheless, there we go. Okay, next thing we need is another set of text views that will show the value of latitude and longitude. So I'll grab this and I'm going to peg him to the left of latitude, and then also just drag the constraint to the very top of the screen, just like so. And this one, we're going to plug in with a new resource value, we'll say 0, 0.0, which represents, essentially, we have not yet found latitude or longitude for this value. So there we go, 0, 0.0. Looks like we want to give this some of the same constraints we gave the other, so we'll do 8 to the left, 8 to the top, 
just like so. That'll keep it in line a little bit better. Now let's do a longitude value, grab another text view, and this is going to get a little bit tricky, but we're going to put him right to the uh, bottom of LBL latitude value, just like so. And we'll move this guy to the right over there, just like so. And we have to do a little bit of finagling here. Yeah, let's bump that again to 8 and 8 again. And what's nice about this is that for the text value, we can reuse something that we've already created. So all I need to do is go to the top and start typing in 0, 0.0, and we see it's going to reuse that same 0, 0.0 we had earlier. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And I could even do a commit if I want to so far. So we'll say just get things started. Okay, so we'll say add colors and start on layout and commit. Okay, now back to our user interface. And we'll find our spinner because we said we have a spinner that's next. So let me just look for a spinner. There we go. We'll take the spinner. And this one we'll need to get a little tricky with again. So let's drop him to the bottom of our longitude value. That's fine. Looks like he's going uh, across just fine. Let's give it a new ID. We'll call it SPN specimens. The idea is the user will be able to see their specimens in this drop down spinner. They'll be able to select one and then they'll be able to view its history or add historical events to it. After that, we're going to get an autocomplete text view. So I grab that, drop them down here, and drag the top to the bottom of the spinner. Let's go wide and wide. And then for the layout width, instead of wrap content, I'm going to say match constraint. Watch what happens to these arrows as this now consumes the entire width of the device. So spinner and autocomplete. These are two things that are smarter than a usual just text field, and that's good. We want to remember that our user will probably be using an, our app at a time when they don't have a lot of time to, to type a whole lot of stuff. They might be stopped at a red light, hopefully not while driving. Uh, they might be uh, in line or in a meeting or in something like that. So we really want to make it easy to just start typing a few things and then our software will be able to autocomplete for them. So this autocomplete text view is for plant names. In other words, I want to add a new specimen of a plant. I have to tell it which plant it's associated with. And that's what this autocomplete text view is for. Let's go ahead and take the text out of this because we just want to start it with whatever the user wants to type in. The ID will say uh, ACT plant name, something like that. And then I'm going to find another item here. I'm going to find something called hint. Hint is something I like a lot because it helps us to declutter our look and feel. In the old days, we would put a label and then like a text entry field. These days, this word hint takes the place of the label and it actually goes into the text entry field. So I can say add a new resource, new string value, and we can say uh, plant name something like that, and then resource value plant name. So it's obvious to the user that I need to type a plant name into this location. Now, what's neat about the autocomplete with the uh, hint is as soon as the focus goes into this component, in other words, when the user uh, types into that autocomplete text field, the hint goes away and the user can start typing. Let's use the same concept with uh, a plain text. A plain text isn't an autocomplete. It's more like just type whatever you want to type. So I'm going to take my plain text, drop it, and then we'll link it to the bottom of the component that's above. Go side to side just like we did before. By the way, if you haven't noticed, when doing these constraint layouts, it is best to start with a screen design and start from the top down. If you want to insert something in the middle of two components that already exist, it gets a little bit tricky. Okay, layout width. Once again, we're going to change this to match constraint. We're going to change the name of this to txt description. This is like the description of a plant, essentially. And then once again, we're going to change the hint. So scroll down a little bit. And a lot of this you can do in the uh, text view as well if you don't like using the YCWIG editor. Uh, so add new resource, new string value, and we'll say description and description. And you see, once again, uh, well, let's see. Let me take the text out because it looks like the text is overwriting the hint. So let's take the text name out. And you see that, sure enough, kind of in a lighter gray, you see the word description there. 
Let's do it one more time for date planted. As a matter of fact, we can use a date field for this. We'll drop the date and wire up the constraints as we wish. Okay, uh, layout width again, we'll go match constraint. And remember when you're making this, the reason why we call it a constraint layout is that Android users tend to have different devices with different resolutions, and we want to make the most of each of those resolutions. So assume that somebody's not using your phone, but maybe they're using a tablet or something else. So let's call this one TXT date planted. And once again, you probably have a fairly good idea of what we're going to do here. We'll make sure there's nothing in the text for this. Looks like we already took that out. And then we're going to go find the hint. New resource, date planted and date planted. And okay. Now the next piece gets a little weird because what we want to do is we want to have a button bar uh, but we want to have three equally sized buttons. So we need to put a layout within a layout here. So I'm going to go to layouts and we're going to use a horizontal linear layout. So that kind of stacks things at equal width. So I take that and I plop it down here and this one might get just a little bit tricky because you see at first it wants to consume the entire uh, balance of the screen. Hang on, we'll come back and we will we will right size that in just a moment. But first of all, let me add three image buttons specifically. We want an image button because an image button allows us to place an image on top of the button. And that's very much friendly. Let's see, we'll zoom up a little bit here so I can show you what it's going to look like. You see we have a camera, a save, and then like a little person. Um, that's very much friendly to a wider audience for a couple of reasons. First of all, on Android, we say that pictures are faster than words, which means people can recognize pictures much faster than they can rec read or recognize words. Secondly, think about of an international audience, one that doesn't know the language that you may speak. Uh, there are a lot of images that are just universal, the kinds that you see in airports a lot, where you will know what it is regardless of the language that you speak. So let's go ahead and start with image button. I'm going to drop one. And one tricky thing is we have to plug in just like a kind of a generic image until we actually make some images. So uh, let's see, we'll just go with launcher to begin with and we'll come back and we'll add something else in a bit. So we start with one image button. We add one more. Okay. And once again, we'll go to uh, IC launcher. And you notice as I add the second image button, the first image button kind of squishes up and they both end up sharing equal space. So we'll do one more image button, and once again, project, we'll say IC Launcher, and OK. Now let's give these images names. So we'll say this one is going to be, or we'll give the buttons names. We'll say BTN Take Photo, so we know what that one is eventually going to be. And then this one we're going to say BTN Save, so we know that one will eventually save. And then this one we're going to say BTN Login, log on if you want. We will, in a separate video, we will make some actual images that go in here. That's about a five minute discussion of its own, and I don't like when videos go too long. So these are just placeholders for now, but eventually we will put an image, uh, we will put actual images in there. Now let's take a look at our, at our container, which is this, uh, which is our linear layout. And let's see if we can make some adjustments here. Okay, layout width, let's say wrap content. Uh, now let's tell you, let's do match constraint because that'll take it all the way wide. And layout height, let's say wrap content. Let's see if that squishes it up. Sure enough, it does. Now layout width, it, it doesn't let me choose match constraint on this one. And I noticed this one earlier. Let me go ahead and save and let's go back into text here. Some things we just have to do uh, back in the text view. So we'll say layout width, match parent, just like so, instead of match constraint and save. And now let's go back to design view and sure enough we see it's stacked all the way across and it's taking up only the height of those individual buttons. So the last thing that we need to do then is we need an image view and we'll probably replace this later with a recycler view, but an image view at least will let us start thinking about what our application, uh, well, it'll let us start using our, our application to capture images. So let's take this and once again, let's do the constraint. Whoop, we'll do left and right and top and bottom. 
And we'll just say that we want this image to take the balance of the space, space that is left over. So we'll go match constraint and match constraint and save. And if we take a look now, we'll zoom out just a bit, but we see sure enough, we have a look and feel that looks very similar to the one that we were trying to replicate on the answer key. So lots more we can do from here. Uh, we can wire up something to our autocomplete. We can wire up something to the spinner. We can make our buttons click. But this is a platform or an entry door that's going to allow us to do all of that. And we'll take a look at that in the next series of videos. For now, I'm going to right click and I'm going to do a git commit. And we'll save all of our work. So we'll say add more widgets to layout. So we'll do a, we'll do a, do a commit. And then we'll take a look at some of those other things that we can do with our layout in the next series of videos. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.